Hello, fourth and fifth grade. I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome back to lesson two with Miss Gallinger in her house. I hope that you guys are having a great day so far. Maybe getting out and getting a little fresh air in your yard. Um, I was I'm looking out the window right now at my house and seeing that there are leaves on the trees and it's a little cloudy out, but it looks like maybe it's going to clear up. I'm actually recording this on Monday, even though you guys probably won't see it until Thursday. So. So anyway, um, exciting spring is here. Um, hoping to see you all again soon, but let's go ahead and get started with our lesson two. We're going to warm up our voices with the slide whistle. First listen and then copy that sound with your voice. bodies a little bit. So for this next part, you're probably going to laugh and that's okay. I won't be offended. So I wanted to do a dance with you guys using ribbon wand streamers, but I don't have the ribbons with me. I know you guys don't have the ribbons with me. So I had to be a little creative and figure out a way that I could make a ribbon wand streamer from stuff that I have at home. So I took a highlighter and toilet paper and now I have a ribbon wand streamer. So I just took about six or seven squares of toilet paper, threaded it through the little clip on the end of my highlighter and tied a knot gently. You want to be careful not to pull too hard on the knot otherwise the toilet paper will tear and you'll kind of have to start over. Make sure before you do this that you check with your family and make sure it's okay to use six or seven sheets of toilet paper. We don't want anybody's families getting upset with them over that. I thought it would be kind of a fun activity since we've all heard lots right now about people buying too much toilet paper and all of that. So I thought it would be a fun little activity to make our ribbons out of toilet paper. So if you want to pause the video right now and go find something that you could make a streamer with, you are welcome to do that. If you don't have a highlighter or a pen, you could use a pencil, you could use a spoon, you could use a stick that you find out in your or find in the backyard. Um, if you can't use toilet paper, that's okay too. You could just use your arm to do this, or you could use like a napkin, or you could get a sock and maybe do it with a sock. So whatever you want to do, I'm not picky. I just want you to get your body moving. So we're listening to the music for the different phrases to see if we can start matching the moves that I'm doing to the sounds and the phrases of the music. So first I'm going to help you, and then I'm going to be asking you to listen and figure out what move comes next. So I call this figure eight. It's just sideways eights in front of your body. I call this rainbow. I call this beat, 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 switch hands. Beat, 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 beat. Then it starts over again with the figure eights. Listen to the music for this part. Here's the rainbow part. Here's our beats. One, two, three, four, change. One, two, three, four. Here's your beats. One, two, three, four, switch. One, two, 
by yourself completely. Together, add in marching right now. So figure eight, but marching on the beat. Rainbows. And beats. Other side. Guys, that was lots of fun. Thank you for trying that with me, especially with our makeshift ribbon wand streamers. I think um, these are a little bit not as colorful as the ones we use in class. Maybe we could take a marker and decorate this. I'm not sure. That might be a project for another day, but thanks for having fun with that. So the next thing we're gonna do is work on rhythm a little bit. Yesterday, we reviewed Tippy T and T Tippy. And so I'm just gonna randomly select four rhythm cards from my stack. So I've got four that have Tippy T and T Tippy in them. And we're gonna see if we can just clap these while we're saying them. Remember, if it's the 16th note at the beginning, that's the fast part followed by the slow. And then if you have it the other way, with the eighth note first followed by the 16th notes, that's gonna be slow, fast, fast. So let's just see how you guys do. Remember to clap it as you say it. One, two, here you go. Tippy tee tee tee, tippy tee ta. Next one, here you go. Tee tippy tippy tee 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 ta. Next one, here you go. Tee tippy tee tee tee, tippy tippy tee. Ooh, that was tricky at the end. Next one, here you go, tee tee tippy tee two. Excellent. So let's see if you guys can do those without my help this time. I'll point to the rhythm, but all I'm gonna do is click on the steady beat. Your job is to clap the rhythm. One, two, here you go. Next card, here you go. Next card, here you go. Next card, here you go. All right, how did you do? Did you get those down? Now we're gonna play a little game with these four cards that I randomly selected from our stack. This time, you're gonna clap each card two times. But on the second time, I'm gonna be changing the card to the next one, so you have to remember what this rhythm was while I'm changing to the next one. So again, you're clapping and saying. The first time, I'm gonna do it with you, and then the second time, I'll expect you to do it all by yourself. One, two, here we go. Tippy tee, tee tee, tippy tee ta. Tippy tee, tee tee, tippy tee ta. Tee tippy tippy tee, tee tee ta. Tee tippy tippy tee, tee tee ta. Tee tippy tee tee, tee tippy tippy tee, tee tippy tee tee, tee tippy tippy tee, tee tee tippy tee two. Tee tee tippy tee two. How'd you do? Did I mess anything up? I think I got them all right, but you guys should be double checking me just in case I make a mistake. This time, I'm just gonna click the steady beat and you're gonna see if you can do that same thing all by yourself without my help. One, two, here you go. Awesome. Tomorrow, we'll pick 
four more random cards and see if you can do it with those four. Good work today on rhythm, guys. We're gonna do one last thing. We're gonna work a little bit with Mi Re Do, Do Re Mi on the staff. So just to review, I, over here I have Do Re Mi. We're gonna pretend that we're in the key of F major, which would mean that if we had a treble clef over here at the beginning, we would have a flat sign on line number three, and that flat sign would tell us we're in F major, which means Do is on space number one. So if Do is on space number one, we know that Do and Re are a step apart, so that Re would go on line number two. If we know that Re is on line number two, we know that Re and Mi are also a step apart, so that means that Mi would go on space number two. So we have Do, Re, and Mi. So over here, I have some notes on the staff that we're gonna sight read, but I did not put the letters in these notes. So you are actually reading them based on where they are on the staff. So we know this is Do, what would this be? If you said Re, you're very correct. And what would this one be? Me and me, because these ones are repeated notes. They're on the same space. So let's see if we can sing this little exercise together. Here is do, re, di, go, do, re, mi, mi. Very good, do it without my help. Here you go. Good, let's change just one note and see if we can sing it a little bit differently. Let's move this second me down to do. Let's see how that sounds. Here is do, re, di, go, do, re, mi, do. Ooh, that almost sounds like, are you sleeping? You guys know that song. Are you sleeping, are you sleeping, brother John? Brother John, or if you know the French version, Fera Jaca, Fera Jaca. Okay, so very good. So that's a song that you know that has Do, Re, Mi, Do. Let's move another note. Actually, let's add some notes because you guys are fourth and fifth grade, so you can totally handle this. Okay. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I want to add one more. Let's add right here. I'm going to have to move this dough for just a second. Okay, so let's see what this sounds like now. Here is do, re, di, go, do, re, mi, do, re, do, do. Again and see if you notice anything about ending on this re. Just listen carefully and see if you notice anything. Here is do, re, di, go, do, re, mi, do, re, do, do, re. Does it sound finished if we end on re? Kind of sounds like there should be at least one more note, doesn't it? Huh, okay. So what should we try? What if we try making it a me? Let's see if that sounds finished. Okay, here we go. Don't forget to be using your hand signs, guys. I'm not doing that because I'm pointing, but. Do, re, mi, do, re, do, do, re, mi. Well, it sounds better than ending on re, that's for sure. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Let's try ending on do and let's see if that sounds better. Okay. Here we go. Do, re, mi, do, re, do, do, re, do. Now does it sound finished? It does. So that's an important thing when we're thinking about music composition, in other words, writing music, is that it doesn't always sound good to end on a re or a mi. Sometimes a mi is okay, but usually most songs end on a do. And so that's because it makes it sound more finished. And there are some musical reasons for why that is, which we won't get into right now. 
but usually songs will end on a do just because it gives a, a more finished and complete sound. So you guys did a great job working with our do, re, mi, mi, re, do today. Remember, we're always thinking about the words step and skip and leap. And do, re, mi are stepwise. So do, re is a step. Re, to mi is a step. Do, to mi is a skip because we have re in the middle. So thank you for tuning in to day two of music with Miss Gallinger at her house. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you back tomorrow for day three. Take care. I love you. I miss you. I can't wait to see you soon. Bye-bye.